Baseball's Major League Clubs pause once again in the midst of their pennant races for the annual All-Star Game. Scene of the 1956 contest, 23rd of the series, is Griffith Stadium in the nation's capital. And for the first time in All-Star history, the game is dedicated to the memory of an individual, Mark C. Griffith, late owner of the Washington Club and one of baseball's greatest pioneers. He built the stadium that provides the backdrop for the day's brilliant action. Only 29,000 will be able to jam their way into the ballpark. But that's a mere segment of the millions of fans who will be watching the dream game on television or listening to radio accounts across the length and breadth of our land, in the Caribbean countries, and even overseas, wherever our armed forces happen to be located. The best talent of the two leagues is assembled here, the most powerful sluggers and the most brilliant pitchers in the National and American Leagues can muster. Cameramen are here to perpetuate the scene with pictures that will become fond memories in years to come. Some players, such as Bob Friend, the Pittsburgh star, make their own movies. Warren Giles, president of the National League, is on hand early, chatting with some of his players. The National League has won five of the last six games, but still trails the American League 13 to nine. Across the field is Will Harris, president of the American League. He has been head of the American League throughout the history of the All-Star Series, inaugurated in 1933. Commissioner Ford Frick is present with Mrs. Frick. The commissioner is in charge of the All-Star game, even as he is of the World Series. And of course, he's the number one neutral. Ted Klazuski, Cincinnati first baseman, who has hit 40 homers or more in each of the last three seasons, shows his mighty biceps. Then joins two other National League sluggers, Duke Snyder of Brooklyn and Stan Musial of the Cardinals in pregame chatter. Here are two of the youngest power hitters of the rival circuits. Mickey Mantle, who belts homers from both sides of the plate for the Yankees. Mickey entered the All-Star game as the Major League's home run king. Ed Bailey, Cincinnati catcher, who was one of five Red Lakes voted into the starting lineup by the fans. This is the big four of the American League, gathered for the 1956 Classic. Yogi Berra of the Yankees, Ted Williams of the Red Sox, Mantle of the Yankees, and Al Kaline of Detroit, who won the 1955 American League batting title at the age of 20, the youngest player ever to win this championship. Among the best of the more youthful hitters in the National League are Hank Aaron of the Braves and Ken Boyer, Cardinal third sacker. Two National League veteran catchers, Roy Campanella of Brooklyn and Stan Lopata of the Phillies talk things over. Campy won the National League Most Valuable Player Award for the third time in 1955. Willie Mays, spectacular center fielder of the Giants, who won the 1955 Major League Homer title with 51, is back for another All-Star appearance along with a newcomer, first baseman Dale Long of Pittsburgh. Long had a sensational spring during which he shattered all records by hitting a homer in eight consecutive games. Ernie Banks of the Cubs became the greatest home run hitting shortstop in baseball history when he pounded out 44 in 1955. Stan Musial of the Cardinals and Ed Matthews, the Braves third baseman, give the National League tremendous southpaw power. Stan the man, batting champion six times, also has been an outstanding figure in all-star play. He leads with four homers, the last one winning an 11-inning thriller for the National League in Milwaukee in 1955. Calvin Griffith, nephew of the late Clark Griffith, is the host at this 23rd All-Star Game as president of the Washington Club. The rival managers, of course, are Casey Stengel, who has piloted the Yankees to six pennants in the last seven years, and Walter Smokey Alston, who is in his third season as manager of the Dodgers. In 1955, Alston was the winning manager in the first World Series Stengel ever lost since he took the Yankee reins in 1949. The field is cleared and the players line up along the baselines for the beginning of the flag-raising ceremony. The band swings through the middle of the field for the parade to the flagpole. Nothing could be more fitting than a flag-raising at these games. For baseball is truly America's national sport, wherein every race, color, and creed is represented in a perfect expression of the democratic ideal.
And the All-Star Game carries that out to the utmost degree. For this Midsummer Classic gives every star a chance, even if he's with a perennial second division club. He may never be fortunate enough to appear in a World Series, but the All-Star Game gives him a day in the sun. With the flag raising over, the two managers are as eager to get the game underway as the spectators who fill every available seat in the stands. Here's a CD player, flip and fold seats, and uh, cup holders all around <laughs> tonight. You know, on a test drive, it's, it's usually the uh, customer who drives the van. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Ron, can you uh, pull over right here, please? Test drive the Silhouette Premier by Oldsmobile now and get a free $25 Blockbuster gift card. It's the first minivan with a built-in video entertainment system. Are you sure you don't want to drive? Oh, no, you're doing a great job. Great. For test drive details, call 1-877-MOVIE-VAN or see your local Oldsmobile dealer. Hey, Dad, what are you doing up? We live in your mother's stuffed peppers. <laughs> Hartford again, huh? What are you taking? Tom's, and I'm back for more. You still taking that stuff? Look, Dad, take a Pepsi AC. One tiny pill controls acid all night. So I can get some sleep. Uh, next time, take one before dinner, and you can stop heartburn before it starts. Before it starts? You don't see me suffering, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing now? Uh, nothing, dear. We were talking about your, your peppers. Peppers, oh, peppers yeah. I got some in the fridge. You can sleep heartburn free with Pepsi AC. So what you're saying is you can't change your oil every 3,000 miles because you're too busy. So you push it. Just like your cheap brother-in-law at one of those all-you-can-eats. Hey, it's your car. You want to learn the hard way? Be my guest. This is reformulated Quaker State. Protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. You ought to change your oil on time, but if you can't, can you say insurance? Quaker State. It's been tested. It works. What more do you need to know? If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Hi, I'm old school pitcher Jim Palmer, and this is ESPN Classic. Now that's old school. This is ESPN Classic. There is an electric tension in the air that is exceeded only at World Series time. The starting pitchers have stepped up their warm-up pace. Billy Pierce, the stylish southpaw of the Chicago White Sox, will start for the American League for the third time in the last four years. He hasn't given up a run in six innings of all-star play. Bob Friend, key figure in the spectacular start of the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 1956 season, will open for the National League. And here are the starting lineups. For the National League, Johnny Temple, Cincinnati, second base. Frank Robinson, Cincinnati, left field. Stan Musial, St. Louis, right field. Ken Boyer, St. Louis, third base. Gus Bell, Cincinnati, center field. Dale Long, Pittsburgh, first base. Ed Bailey, Cincinnati, catcher. Roy McMillan, Cincinnati, shortstop. Bob Friend, Pittsburgh, pitcher. For the American League, Harvey Keene, Detroit shortstop. Nellie Fox, Chicago White Sox, second base. Ted Williams, Boston, left field. Mickey Mantle, New York Yankees, center field. Yogi Berra, New York Yankees, catcher. Al Kaline, Detroit, right field. Mickey Vernon, Boston, first base. George Kell, Baltimore, third base. Billy Pierce, Chicago White Sox, pitcher. The umpires discuss the ground rules with the managers. Six umpires are assigned with the two extra men posted down the foul line. Commissioner Ford Frick gives the honor of throwing out the first ball to Clark Griffith II, 15-year-old grandnephew of Clark Griffith, to whose memory the game is dedicated. 
and the 1956 All-Star Game is underway. Here starts in brilliant fashion by striking out Temple. Boyer then gets the first hit of the game in the second inning with a single to center. After two more strikeouts by Pierce, Boyer ends the inning as Bearer throws him out in an attempted steal. After one out in the third inning, McMillan walks. Friend sacrifices Pierce to Nellie Fox, who covers first base. Temple singles to right center and his Red League sidekick McMillan scores the first run of the game and the National League leads one to nothing. There's something about the blues that makes you feel alive. I don't want much. After two out, Keen singles in the American League third. Fox also singles, and the American League threatens for the first time with a mighty Ted Williams at bat. However, Williams grounds out to Long, and Bob Friend closes his three-inning pitching term with a one-to-nothing edge. Whitey Ford and the Yankees enters the game as the American League pitcher in the fourth inning. He opens by striking out Musial. But then Boyer singles for his second hit. That brings Willie Mays to the plate, batting for Gus Bell. And the New York Giants star slams a home run deep into the bleachers in left center to give the National League a lead of three to nothing in four innings. out in the last half of the fourth and Warren Spahn pitching. Temple makes a nice stop of Barrett's slow roller behind second but couldn't make a play. Cincinnati's second base combination comes through with another sparkling play when Temple darts to his right to spear Vernon smash and flips the ball to McMillan for a fourth out. After the National League increases its margin to four to nothing, Boyer helps preserve it with a sensational diving stop of Keene's sizzling drive and throws him out in the last half of the fifth. It was the second time he robbed Keene of a hit. Rogaine Extra Strength is proven to work for four out of five men. I like my ch This is ESPN Classic, the Classic Sports Network. The greatest sports challenges of all time. The New York Giants battle the Boston Celtics. Tom Brewer is pitching for the American League in the sixth inning. Pat Lazuski greets him with a double off the bullpen fence in left field. Bailey flies to Williams, who comes in fast for the ball. McMillan's little looper falls just out of Vernon's reach for a single, and Kluzewski stops at third base. Kluzewski scores a moment later on a wild pitch, and the National League has built up a 5 to nothing margin. Opens the sixth inning for the American League with a single. 
There is immediate activity in the National League bullpen as Johnny Antonelli begins warming up. Williams is up for the second time. And there it goes, a tremendous home at the right center. It's a 440-foot blast into the bullpen. And Ted Fox home behind Nellie Fox for the first two American League runs to make it 5-2. to two. It's home in number four in all-star play for Williams. And he thereby ties Musial for most home runs in these all-star classes. Mickey Mantle follows with another home run. A line shot into the front rows of the bleachers and left center. And the American League followers in the crowd rock the rafters and frenzy. Manager Walt Alston of the National League calls Johnny Antonelli to the mound. There still is nobody out as Antonelli faces Sherry Lawler of the White Sox. Lawler keeps the rally going with a single. Al Kaline also single. With the left-handed Andinelli pitching, Casey Stengel sends Vic Power, the Kansas City A's, to the plate for Vernon. Power flies to Musial. Andinelli then squirms out of the perilous situation when Kell grounds into a double play to end the inning. However, the American League has slashed the National League lead to five to three. The world has seen. Snyder opens the seventh inning for the National League by striking out. Musial smashes a home run into the seats in left center. Stand the man, thereby regained sole possession of the all-star record that Williams has just tied in the last inning. For well, this is Musial's fifth homer in the 13 all-star games in which he has appeared. After Mays walks, Brzezewski clouts his second successive double with a line drive down the right field line, and Mays races home. It lengthens the National League margin to seven to three and in seven innings. Herb Score, spectacular young Cleveland Southpaw, takes over the American League pitching in the eighth. He walks Temple with two out. Temple promptly poses a scoring threat when he steals second base. But the dangerous Duke Snyder. Lifts a pop fly in front of the plate, and Lala makes a fine catch. Williams leads off the eighth for the American Leaguers, and the crowd is expected. But Ted lifts a fly at a short left field, and the fans hold their breath as Musial and Boyer collide. Stan catches the ball, and there is suspense as Musial is slow to get up. Finally, the great St. Louis star does scramble to his feet and slowly walks to his position. However, Walt Austin comes onto the field and he sends Hank Aaron of Milwaukee in to replace Stan, who gets an ovation from the stands. There is no scoring in the inning and the American League enters the night still trailing seven to three. It's up to Antonelli now, insofar as the National League is concerned. Jimmy Pearsall of the Red Sox is the first batter. He is thrown out by McMillan. Vic Power gives the American League an opening when he singles off Temple's glove. George Kell follows with another single. Washington's partisan American League fans buzz with excitement as their own slugger, Roy Seavers, pinch hits for early win. Receivers pops to Boyer. Now Harvey Keene is the only obstacle to a National League victory.
Keen forces Pell at second base, McMillan to Temple, and the National League wins seven to three. It's the sixth triumph in the last seven games for the National League in the All-Star Series. It was a brilliant contest marked by highlights of offensive power as well as dazzling defensive play. The fans are talking excitedly as they head for the exit. Baseball truly is the finest entertainment you can find. Follow your favorite team. Get out in the fresh air. It's fun for the entire family. Jackie Rose. This is ESPN Classic.